What's going on everyone? Austin John please here and welcome back to the 100% walkthrough of Skyward Sword HD. In our last episode we completed the Fire Sanctuary and defeated Girahim for the second time. And now in this episode pretty much everything is unlocked in the game by now. So we're doing some of the last sky chests. Fighting Bigfoot who now has big hands. Our sword grows wings. We learn how to do a bower roll. We do a bower roll with a windfish. Yes, like from Link's Awakening. And catch some bugs. That's what we're doing today. To date, we have 19 pieces of heart, 25 goddess cubes, 21 of them opened, 59 grabbed into crackles, 9 medals, 18 hearts. And by the end of the episode, we're going to have some more stuff. And if you're following from the last video, I told you about this hole right here, right outside of the fire sanctuary. Well, now we're finally going to head down it and I'm going to hide my face and we're going to continue on with the video. Inside here is going to be a place with a whole bunch of fairies if you need some after that really boss Garaheem fight. And boom, piece of heart. We're up to 19 hearts. We're, we're, we're in the end game now, Tony Stark. I've got some good news. Before we do story stuff, we have side quest stuff. One mini game, some goddess chests, and then some stuff. Great. We have four goddess chests that we need to open. One on Beatles Island. One down here underneath Fun Fun Island. One at the Isle of Songs and one at Bug Rock. And we're actually going to be getting that one goddess chest on Beatles Island closer to the end of this episode because we're going to go there for three things all at the same time. So our first order of business is we're going to go get all three of these. First to Fun Fun Island. Approaching Fun Fun Island just underneath it. That's going to get us a gold ruby. Pretty nice. Approaching the Isle of Songs in Thunderhead as we have done many times before. This chest is going to be located on the top and it's going to be a small bomb bag. That's going to go to item check. Obviously we don't need that so we're just going to sell that off once we get back there. And next we're going to head to this floating island that's right next to it. Well, not the one that's right next to it, but the one after that. And that's Bug Rock Island, which we're going to be revisiting quite shortly, but not immediately. But the chest that we need to get actually requires us to... Well, you don't have to land on the outside. You can just go to the top and then drop down, but you might as well just land on the outside because we currently have no other business here. And that's going to be for a piece of heart. Three to go. Instead of heading to Skyloft for the last chest that we need, which is on Beetle's Island and we have to go there at nighttime, we're actually going to head to the Lanayru Desert for a very fast mini game. Well, compared to the last two mini games that I had to make dedicated videos for, yes, it's going to be a very fast mini game. When landing down here, we are going to be going to the shipyard, which is all the way on the west side. And as I alluded to before, there is a mini game involving this roller coaster. If you need some Lazafo tales, go for it. This guy, uh, Gotram. Gotram is going to be here, and he's going to ask if you want to have some fun. So this is a roller coaster mini game. It's twenty dollars. It's twenty rupees a ride, and then you get the scary option, which if you remember this area, scary is the first half of the course. If you were to beat that in under 30 seconds, you get a silver rupee worth 100. And according to this, a near miss is 50 rupees. I do not know what defines as a near miss. And heart stopping, if you beat it in under 65 seconds, you get a piece of heart. A near miss is a monster horn or an evil crystal. And if you complete it subsequently after the piece of heart, you would get a blue bird feather or a golden skull. So we are going to be doing the heart stopping. I have played this a few times on the Wii and it only took me like, I don't know, I want to say less than five attempts in order to beat it under 65 seconds. There's just a few things that I remember and a few things that kind of seem weird slash random. All right, we're going to start off going straight. I'm not going to touch anything right now and now I'm going to lean left going into the first turn. Releasing right, left, release, right, release, right. Release, left, release, L3 for hop, right, release, left, release, right, staying right, release, right, release, right, straight, left, straight, right, left, right, left. It's really important that you stay left at that Y right there, because that's going to give you that boost that you need on that real flat area. And then left, straight, right, 
Oh, oh, that was... I might lose a little bit of time there. Left, release, right, let go. Wow. You know, I, I don't have a better um, strategy other than the exact same thing that I just did, which apparently you could see one time it worked and one time it didn't. But hey, there we go. That's that piece of heart that we needed. Nice. Hope you come back soon. I'm never coming back here again. Bye forever. And for now, we're just gonna head to Farron because it's time to go to the sealed grounds again. It should be noted that if you have anything to do in Farron, right now is a great time to do it because there's, there's gonna be a little bit of a time that you can't do anything in Farron. And then it opens up again, so don't even worry about it too much. But just saying, if there's a specific item you need to farm, like some some wasps nest or something now it now is your prime opportunity oh they're all blue now okay i'm i'm a little busy with stuff here fellas bye hi gorko oh look these are here now these weren't here before whoa i think my heart stopped this is it discovery of a lifetime there's no mistaking it this symbol must mark one of the goddess walls and he wants me to draw a arrow here I think I could draw an arrow in uh, handheld mode, right? In, in controls only mode. Is this an arrow? That looks like an arrow to me. Nope, those are hearts. I failed. It's not what I was expecting would appear. Need to do a little bit more research. Okay, well, if you get that right, I think he gives you a piece of heart immediately and I did not get it right, so. I guess I need to wait for that to reset or something. Hi, Granny. I did all of the things and now my sword is bigger. There's no doubt the secret blames have purified this blade. That's right. Did I say the blades have purified the blade? I mean, the blades have purified... The flames have purified the blade. That's what I meant. Great. Time to do a skyward strike on this crest. What? Oh. What was that? What's going on here? The seal has given away again. The terrible beast is awakening as we speak. Oh, Goose is gonna help us. There is a save bird over here, in case you need to save your game. I recommend always saving before uh, <laughs> before doing one of these fights. There's also a stool in the room if you need, and time to head on out. Oh yeah, he has this giant minecart going around the outside. Try not to drool, I call it the Grucinator. Anyways, tell me where you want me to place the shots and I'll put a hurting on that ugly monster. Okay, cool. Goose actually makes it so it's a little bit easier to do the method that involves floating down from the middle because now the imprison is going to be coming out of the ground here and he's going to be having arms. And I'm going to speed up this footage because it's very slow. It's the imprisoned. So now every time that he stomps down, he's going to have big old energy by his feet, right? Which is obviously bad. And you can feel free to use a different means to attack it like arrows or bombs or something. But the challenge really comes when you're trying to work around it and you want to get to the front. But if you could destroy all of the toesies on one foot, then he's going to move much slower, making it much easier to attack the second foot. Oops, got hit. Typically doesn't happen. Oh, there's the heel on the left foot. Okay. So I now have the option to have Gruus knock him down with a bomb. But first, I want to come here, and there's a chance that if there's only like one toe left or something, that if you destroy it, he's going to fall down. Yeah. It's it's a little wonky on how it works because he needs to stop the animation of trying to climb. But if you could time it like that, ooh, you are golden, homie. I'm gonna swipe up here. Fantastic, now he's gonna stand up. He's gonna push that out of his head. He's gonna roar and respawn all of his integers with his big old nasty looking t fingers. And now is gonna be my opportunity to fly up and land directly on him. And I'm pretty sure we can do this flawlessly. Right now I do have the option of using Groose with the Y button, which would stop him from moving, but I'm fairly confident I got this. Got it. And that's two out of the three hits necessary. He's gonna buck and bronco me off. And now he's gonna lay down on the ground and get ready to go around in a lap. But you can actually use Groose to prevent him from doing that. Oh, I'm at a bad angle. I'm at a really bad angle. And we're gonna fire now. Hopefully that's gonna work. Oh, it did work. Nice. All right, so that's gonna stop him from progressing. And now we can just hop into the middle. 
Oh, he needs to do the, the forehead thing again. And in the middle gust. As I mentioned before, if you wanted to do the route of destroying all of his toes, you could do that, but then you lose way too many hearts. And uh, in certain playthroughs, boss rush, hero mode, you're gonna want those hearts as much as possible. Oh! He hit me off! What a big jerk face. I have an alternate strategy. I'm just gonna wait for Gruus. Oh, I was able to call him back with the X button. Now I'm gonna bomb him, which is gonna stun him. And now that he's stunned, I can go up into the airstream and that should be enough time for us to land on him and get those three hits in. Right here. It was not enough time, he started walking, but I was still able to get the three hits in. And he didn't buck and bronco me off. Well, there we go. And how many hearts? I think I only got hit once. If you're doing the boss rush, you just grab one of the hearts nearby. If you're playing on hero mode, I mean, losing one heart or essentially at that point, two hearts isn't that bad when you have 19. As always, we run to the middle and Skyward Strike that. And then we have to do this pattern, which is like an hourglass. All right, let's head inside the uh, the sealed grounds to the gate of time. You have my thanks, Austin J. As do you, Gruus. I do not wish to dwell on what may have happened if you two hadn't been here. Aw, Granny, you give me too much credit. You were the one who got me to stop feeling sorry for myself and put my energy into doing what I could to help. See, this is why everyone likes Gruus, because his character development, uh, so good. You must wonder what you've been fighting out there in the Great Pit. There is much to tell you, but suffice to say, it is the root of the evil we face. When you pass through the Gate of Time, you shall learn more. We may seal it and reseal it into the prison a thousand times, but it will always shatter the bonds to confine it. Such is its awesome power. We must destroy it at its source, or suffer the same fate again. All right, well, time to uh, strike this crust over here. Now we're treated to a nice cutscene. You can put your controller down. And boom, Tetris pieces start moving. And now they're even somehow more Tetrisy. Look at all these Tetris pieces. And boom, yeah, there's a big old clock here. I probably sped that footage up because it was really, really long and it was just, you know, it transforming into something that we've already seen before. Boom, big old clock. Got it? Because it's a gate of time. Actually, I wouldn't call it a clock. It's more just like a cog. Standing before you is a path that transcends the flow of time. It is a portal to the past, to the very place where Zelda now waits. Go bravely, Austin J. If everything as I suspect, the reunion with Zelda you fought so hard for lies beyond this gate. Thanks, Granny. What about Gruus? Nah, don't worry about me. I'm gonna hang back here, Austin J. See, when he says Austin J, it sounds cool. Someone's gotta stick around and guard the place. Might as well be me. Besides, if I'm not here, who's gonna look out for the old girl? And you know what? Nah, forget about it. Yeah, Gruus definitely has like a like a greaser Brooklyn vibe to him. When you see Zelda, tell her I said, "What's up?" Sup, girl? How you doing? Yo, why your hair so yellow? All right, time for Link to walk through. He approaches. We're gonna touch it. I expect it to be like a puddly animation. Is it a puddle? Or is it a glow? Oh no, it's a puddle. We got it. And then a glow. Wow. And then whoa. Some crazy infinity mirror action going on here. I also noticed that the cog is moving counterclockwise. That's because we're going back in time. And now this cog is moving clockwise, because it, it would go to further in time. Where am I now? The Temple of Hylia. <sighs> Impa's here. Impa, where's Zelda? Hey, hey. You are doubtless overwhelmed, so I can explain things as simply as I can. This is the Temple of Hylia, though it will come to be known as the Sealed Temple sometime in the future. You stand in the past, ages before your own time. Here, the goddess Hylia has only just sealed away demise, and little time has passed since the goddess sent the outcropping of rock into the sky that will one day become Skyloft. It is true to its name. You have passed through the gate of time to an era in the distant past. You have many questions, but for now, you must proceed back through the great doors behind you. 
with some pretty great doors. It is there that the person you've risked life and blood to defend waits for you. Is it Zelda? Another cutscene. This looks like Zelda. It's Zelda! I like a gown. You've come so far, Austin J. I'm glad you made it. Thanks, fam. I imagine Impa filled you in on everything. We've traveled very far from home to the distant past. In this era, the wounds inflicted on the land during the battle between the goddess and the demon king known as Demise have not healed yet. All the fairy tales about the war we heard growing up on Skyloft, incredible as it may seem, they appear all too real. I think it's time you learn the whole story. Let me try to explain. The old gods created a supreme power that gave anyone who possessed it the ability to shape reality and fulfill any desire. They call it the Triforce. That's the thing that's on my hand. In his thirst to make the world his own, Demise readied a massive army of monsters for war. He sought to take the Triforce for himself by force. Ironically, the goddess feared for her people. She used her power to send both them and the Triforce into the sky on a slice of earth she cut away from this land. The floating rock became the new home to our people. In time, it became known as Skyloft. After a long and fierce battle, the goddess, Hylia, succeeded in sealing away Demise. However, soon after the Demon King was imprisoned, it became clear that the seal would not hold long against his fearsome power. Hylia had suffered grave injuries in her battle with the Demon King. She knew that if he broke free again, there would be no stopping him. If the Demon King were to free himself, it would mean the end of the world for all beings of this land. In order to put an end to the Demon King, Hylia devised two separate plans and put them both into motion. What? First, she created Fee. She made the spirit that resides in her sword serve a single purpose, to assist her chosen hero on this mission. Her second plan was to abandon her divine form and transfer her soul to the body of a mortal. Ellipses. She made the sacrifice, as you have likely guessed, so that the supreme power created by the old gods could one day be used. For while the supreme power of the Triforce was created by gods, all of its power can never be wielded by one. Knowing this power was her last and only hope, the goddess gave up her divine powers and her immortal form. You've probably figured out by now, haven't you, Austin J? You are the chosen hero. And I... Zelda, I am the goddess reborn as a mortal. The day of the ceremony, Garahim's tornado tossed me out of the sky and down to the world below. I was nearly captured by the demonic forces, but I was rescued at the last moment by the old woman who lives in the sealed grounds. Impa looks ashamed by that. I had no memory of all my existence as Hylia, but she explained it to me. She helped me to remember who I was and what I had to do. I set out to pray at the goddess statues located in each temple across the land. Each statue stirred up memories within me. After I visited them all, Impa, the agent of the goddess, led me here to the past. Dot, dot, dot. All of this is part of the same great effort to prevent the revival of demise. Stripped of his true physical form by the seal that binds him, he takes the shape of an abomination. But even in his hideous state, he's more than capable of devouring this land if we allow him to do what he desires. We must stop him from freeing himself at any cost. That is why I intend to remain here in this time and place to sustain the seal as best I can. As long as I continue this vigil, we may be able to prevent the Demon King from fully reviving himself in our own time. <gasps> what? You're gonna stay here? I must maintain the seal that Hylia, rather, that I, created so long ago and kept it strong for as long as I am able. With the memories of my former life returning to me, I can see now that this is my purpose. Oh man. Austin Che, the goddess created Fee and the great blade she's a part of for this specific reason. For the task of standing against Demise in his monstrous form he now assumes rests solely on your shoulders. Back in our time, you've already driven him back into this prison twice now. I can't thank you enough. How do you know? You've been here. During your long journey, you've grown so much. You learned wisdom from solving devious puzzles and traps. You gained power by honing and tempering both yourself and your sword. And by overcoming the trial set before you by the goddess, you found true courage. Why is that text uh, regular speed and the two previous ones were so much slower? Now that those qualities reside in you, you are worthy of wielding the power the old gods left behind for our kind. You can claim the Triforce. You want it? Okay. Valiant hero, you have endured many hardships and journeyed far in your quest to reach this place. Along your travels, you have found wisdom, power, and courage. And for this, I shall bless your sword with the goddess's power. May it give you and your sword the strength to drive back the abomination that threatens this land. It's glowing. 
The mark you see upon the back of your hand is proof that you are the hero of legend and that within you dwells sacred power. This is the mark of the Triforce. Stand now, Austin J. Draw your sword. And the wings are out. And its color slightly changed. The goddess has blessed your blade and the master sword has achieved its ultimate form. The power is now imbued with the mythical power to drive back demons and only Austin J may wield it. Nice. I want to see Garaheem try to slap it out of my hand now. Austin J, before I say another word, I feel like I owe you an apology. You see, the mark of the Triforce on your hand is a symbol of the greatest power in the world. If you can obtain the actual Triforce, we will have the power to vanquish demise once and for all. The problem is, among the countless souls in this world, only a select few, those with an unbreakable spirit, can wield its might. It's impossible to know the true reason why the old gods created the Triforce, but I have a theory of my own. The gods created the Triforce, yet they specifically designed it so that their own kind could never use its power. Somehow, I think that may have been their way of giving hope to all mortal beings of the land, which brings us back to you. To face demise and give the land hope, the goddess Hylia needed someone with an unbreakable spirit. That someone is you, Austin J. But spirit alone wasn't enough. You had to overcome many trials and awaken the hero within yourself so that you could wield that supreme power. And so, Hylia, I mean, and so I, I knew that if it meant saving Zelda, you would throw yourself headfirst into any danger without even a moment's doubt. I'm pretty sure she went into the tornado and then I went home and slept. Just saying. I, I used you. Yo, Hylia is kind of a bee. I can't begin to tell you how sorry I am for pulling you into all of this, Austin J, but you have to understand that this is war, and the fate of the land hangs in the balance. I need your strength to tip the scales in our favor. All this because I liked a blonde girl. You know what? Should have married Patrice instead. All this may be well-intentioned and true, but it doesn't mean it's right, and it doesn't excuse my actions, but I'm prepared to pay the price for what I've done. To ensure that the seal holds, I will remain here in this time, deep in sleep for thousands of years. Austin, I can't say it enough. I'm so sorry for the way I had to involve you in this. But until my memory of things before our lifetime returned to me, I had no idea we were fated to carry such a heavy destiny. Before all this, I was happy just spending my days hanging around with you in Skyloft. I wanted that feeling to last forever. While it's true that I'm highly a reborn, I'm still my father's daughter and your friend. I'm still... Your Zelda. When Demise is finally gone, there will be no more need for the seal that binds him, and then I'll be able to wake up. So I'm going to ask you a favor, sleepyhead. Ever since we were kids, I'd always be the one to wake you up when you slept in. But this time, when it's all over, will you come wake me up? I promise. Okay, bye. Impa, she sleep now. Just awkward silence. Bye. And uh, you could probably figure out who the wise old woman is now. Give you a hint, it's not Zelda. So you've returned. On the other side of that gate, Zelda waits, suspended in his sleep without end. But do not despair, for she is still alive and well. True to legend, the Triforce is the one thing with the power to vanquish demise. It is, though, to have been hidden within Skyloft by the goddess. Sadly, that is all we know of where it rests. All other clues of its whereabouts have been lost to the ages. 
Austin, you have likely come to the same conclusion, but I'll spell it out just the same. The key to finding the Triforce must be in Skyloft. Go now, find the Triforce. Zelda, she's holding up. Was she okay when you saw her? She's great. But she's still stuck there till this whole mess blows over, huh? I made up my mind. I'm not going back. I'm gonna stay here with Granny. Besides, that's not that bad here. Living up in the sky was okay, I guess. But don't you just love the way it smells down here? What? That's not weird to say. Check it out. Zelda and Granny have brought life back to the land here. I bet even the weakest sapling could grow into a beast of a tree in soil like this. I mean, it'd take a few years for it to grow, but as far as I'm concerned, I got nothing but time. Thanks for that hint for a future quest. I just want to say we're going to get that piece of heart from drawing on the wall. And if you failed it like I did, apparently you can save and quit in your save file, load back in. And if we head up the stairs, yeah, got a crust is back. Great. Okay, so let's try this again. Glimmering hexagons. Oh, rupees. Got it. So not good. Oh, it worked. Sweet money bags. So that is what they meant by the greatest riches. For helping me out with my research, I'd like to give you a little something. It's a piece of a heart. The magical power of the goddess walls return after a little time has passed, so come by and help me with the research any time. So now with that all said and done, it is time for us to get out of here. These monsters are becoming a real problem, homie. Real, real problem. All right, time to go to the sky and let's just go back to Skyloft. Inside of the bazaar, you're gonna notice that our fortune teller, I think his name is Sparrow. Sparrow's missing and this guy has a quest bubble. Guru says, I haven't seen much of the fortune teller these days. You know his crystal ball got broken, right? I hope he's not just sitting at home kicking himself for not foreseeing this. He's on the eastern edge of Skyloft. All right, let's go over there. Crossing over the bridge, we're going to take the path upward into the stamina fruit, and then a cut a left, and then into this little tunnel. And over here, this is the fortune teller's house. You can tell because there's a ball above the door. And Sparrow's over here with a quest marker. What's up, buddy? I'm fine, go on, please leave me. After some conversation, he's gonna say, hey, I heard that you were able to retrieve things and I need you to retrieve a crystal ball for me. And Fee says, okay, I'm gonna add it to your dowsing. There you go, thanks Fee. Do you guys remember where the crystal ball is? I pointed it out to you on, I don't know, episode four? It's right there, <laughs> that's it. From the stone that we unlocked before, we can grab out our claw shot, head on over. And as soon as we approach it, Fee is like, hey, you want to call Scrapper? Yeah, hopefully he doesn't screw this up again. From here, we're going to go to the sky and back to Skyloft to that guy's house. Scrapper is just going to drop it on his table. Thunk. He's going to be super excited and super grateful that we gave him back a new crystal ball. How grateful? So grateful that we get five grabbed to two crackles. That puts us up to 64, Nintendo. From here, we're gonna continue with the main quest, which beautifully enough, actually involves us being in Skyloft. Now we need to head into Headmaster Gapora's house, or his room, sorry. Hey, how's my daughter doing? Ah, uh, she's great. And he says, if you have any questions about Skyloft or our history, be like, actually, do you know about the Triforce? Sorry, I don't know about the Triforce. Okay, great, and now we're gonna leave the room. Hey, wait a second. I know someone who might know something about the Triforce. Where is he? Oh, he's in the room next to me. Okay, cool. Instructor Owlin. Maybe it's Olan. I don't know. Anyways, this botanist over here is going to be like, Hey, uh, I know about the Triforce. He's going to say that there is a Sky Leviathan who can actually totally help you out with this. But he hasn't been himself lately. It's like he has some sort of virus or something. So uh, you need to learn how to attack things in the sky. And this is a very simple little game. Might take you one or two tries, but honestly, not the hardest. There we go. To do the attack, it's X. So we just got to spiral through all these. Don't forget the crows, and there's one between these rocks. Is this another crow hiding down here? Yeah. Oh, there's more than 10. I guess you get to kind of choose whichever ones you want to destroy. That's neat. Now that we learned how to spiral charge, we actually need to make our way over to the Lumpy Pumpkin to go get a giant thing of pumpkin soup to go trick the, the, the giant the giant space whale to come on out. Oh, and when we arrive, we can see the new chandelier that we helped pay for. Look at that. Hey there, mister. Uh, we need a giant pumpkin soup for Levias. I feel like that was very fast to make that much pumpkin soup. It's funny how she just calls him the robot and is like very cold and neutral to him. 
and Scrapper is still a simp. From here, we need to make our way inside of Thunderhead to the small island with the little rainbow on it. You're also gonna probably notice that this uh, little island has a whole bunch of hearts on it. That's the case, you know, things go awry. Uh, so here is Levias, and as you can clearly see, he has some stuff growing out of him that doesn't look too kosher. Actually, it looks disgusting. The giant spirit of the skies, Levias. Poor guy, he just wanted soup. Anyways, let's hop on top of our bird, and now, ow. Try to avoid hitting Levias. And we just need to do a new spiral attack into the parasitic eyes that are coming out of him. Easier said than done. Oh, he did a power roll. I'm gonna do a power roll. Uh. Uh. Ah, oh, I missed that one. This may be one of the few times that you actually use the slowdown button while on your loft wing. You're also gonna be dealing with the, the sky snake things, which, I mean, they shouldn't give you too much interference. Honestly, I think the most difficult part of the battle is the fact that you only get three of these little burst attacks. And if you happen to like miss it or misjudge how close you are to one of these eyes, because you know, it's not 3D, uh, it's a little difficult. But honestly, if you just keep your distance, you make your laps, you come at it appropriately from the back, you should be fine. There we go. And after all the eyes are defeated, you're going to see an eye at the very top. Oh wow, it's this little monster thing. So now we need to go and land on Levias's head. I said his head. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that. They put me on the little island. Great. I can grab all these hearts now. Neat. And upon landing, this big old parasite comes on out. Does the parasite have a name? I don't think it does. Oh, Ocular Parasite, uh, Bilocyte. First thing you have to do is swing your sword to the side to hit its wings. Then after the wings are hit, the eye's gonna open up a lot more. And now, oh, I didn't mean to do a Skyward Strike. There we go. Now we have to repeat the same steps. And this is the third round, just like any Zelda boss. I remember him going to the left and right significantly more to like dodge your attacks. Why is he not doing that? Oh, there it is, there it is. There's the dodging. Can we do this a few times, yeah? Three hits, is that enough? Nope, you need more hits, okay. And then said, that's it. Apparently the trick to defeating the virus was using the virus. Most disgusting boss fight ever. Oh no, now he's falling into the clouds. And now he's coming out of the clouds, all healthy looking, yay. And also Thunderhead is less thundery now. Tell me boy, was it you who brought me this most delectable cauldron of pumpkin soup? I must apologize for my earlier behavior. A most peculiar and irksome pest possessed me. I was not myself. Now that that business is done, the delicious aroma of that soup has restored me to my senses. Yes, we're the goddess's chosen hero. Yes, we want to know all about the Triforce, please. Thank you. For the safety of all things, the goddess hid the Triforce somewhere within the rock you call Skyloft. However, the location has been kept a secret. There is a clue to its location meant to be played on the harp that you hold. It's known as the Song of the Hero. The song is the key to revealing the secret location of the Triforce. The goddess split the song into four parts. She entrusted one part with me and the other three parts to the dragons of the land. You must gather each of the parts of the Song of the Hero, seek out the dragons, and convince them to teach you their parts. It looks like we need to revisit all three parts again. Don't worry, this is significantly shorter than, uh, than it was last time. And before we actually head back to all three of those locations, we do have one last thing that we need to do. Okay, so now you have to do something weird. You have to leave Thunderhead, and then after you leave Thunderhead, you have to go back inside Thunderhead. Not very thundery anymore, so is it just head? And on our map, we are actually going to be making our way right here to Bug Rock Island. This looks like a place for a, 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 a gossip stone. It is a place for a gossip stone. You may get rare and difficult to catch bugs if you finish the bug wrangler challenge in Bughaven within two minutes. Thanks, guy. And right next to the flying pier over here, you're gonna be seeing this guy. It's, it's Stritch. 
I threw into this thick fog and ended up on this island. And there's a whole bunch of bugs here. Do you want to try catching some bugs? There's a beginner level and a bug wrangler level. We're actually not going to do this yet, but we do need to speak with him in order to initiate a flag in the game that allows a specific quest to take place. So now we're going to head to Skyloft, we're going to call Beetle, and we're going to enter his little flying airship. And inside of his airship, we are just going to sleep in his bed until night. I mean, I don't know if you could call it a bed. It looks like it's a, I don't know, some sort of compressor or engine part that just happens to have a rug on it. And now we're on Beetle's Island. First order of business, we're going to climb this little ladder up here for a goddess chest that we skipped prior. That's going to be a rupee medal. And now, while we're still here, I mean, pretty much anywhere on the island, we're going to whip out our beetle. And on top of Beetle's airship is going to be that one last uh, Grabditude Crackle. That's now going to bring us up to a total of 65. After getting the Grabditude Crackle, we're going to hop down here and speak with Beetle. And he lost his Horn Colossus Beetle. That's fine. We're going to go find it for him. So now we have to go back inside of Thunderhead, back to Bug Rock, and go speak with uh, Sturch again, whatever his name is. And right here. See, now he has a quest bubble. Sturch is like, well, how's life? <clears throat> I discovered an insanely rare insect after all. Tell me. You want to know more, huh? It's the Horned Colossus Beetle. Uh, you're saying, oh, this is Beetle's pet bug? Yeah, you should give it back. I found this bug and it's all mine. What do you expect for someone who works for Groos? Or cohort of Groos? Anyways, there is a challenge that you have to do. And if you complete the challenge, then you get the beetle. And it costs 10 rupees to do the challenge. You have three minutes to find 10 bugs of his choose, of his choice. Now here's the trick, ready? Take a screenshot, hit the home button. When you hit the home button, your clock is paused. If you were to pause in game, then you cannot view the 10 bugs. But now that we have a screenshot of it, boom. We could see all 10 bugs that we need to gather. On screen is a graphic from Zelda Dungeon that has every single bug that we have to get. And now what I've done for myself is I loaded it up in paint and then I just circled all of the bugs that I need to get so I have a game plan. If you get bugs that you don't need to get, it doesn't help you or anything, so there's no, really no point. And as you can see, for the most part, three of the bugs are in my in the underground central area three of the bugs are on the outside deck area and then three of them are on my way transitioning between those two spaces let's start by going to the right i didn't want to swim hopping out of the water i could push this log over great i got one there's a roller right here he sometimes falls down i don't want him to fall down while i'm up here there's a cicada that we can grab you might want to just get the wasps out of your way. There should be an ant up here at the top. I don't know if it's the same bugs for every person during this challenge or if they're different. The butterfly, another Gerudo dragonfly. Now we're going to head down into the hole. And no, stop facing that way. We got to cut the spider web, which is a pain in the butt. There's a second roller down here. And right here, grasshopper. Again, you don't need to break the pots ever because then you can risk killing the bugs. Instead, you just push the pot out of the way. I'm now going to go through this crawl hole, which brings me to outside. And I know if I move this pot, there's a prey mantis. I don't need a dragonfly anymore. Claw shot up. I just need a grasshopper and the rhino beetle, which are all on the same path right here. After I hop over right past this butterfly, right at the very end here, found you. Nope, nope, you get back here. You get back here, mister. Did it. Oh, did I get him? No, he's right here, got him. And then the last one is the horned beetle, which should be as soon as I climb up here, there he is. This guy doesn't go anywhere. And boom, finished in two of three minutes. You probably saw that I had a time of 3.05. I actually went into that without motion controls on because I was flying. And I'm just generally not used to playing without the motion controls. If you look at your inventory screen, you, know, you now have Beetle's insect cage here. We need to make our way back to Skyloft, back to Beetle's 
uh, airship and then sleep in Beetle's bed again to make our way to Beetle Island at night. Beetle, I found your Beetle. Oh. He's gonna be so happy and so grateful that we found his Beetle and brought his dear bug back to him. He's gonna give us, he's grabbed two crackles. Awesome. That brings us up to a total of 70 which is time for a new reward from Batro. It should also be noted that after doing this quest, the price of the piece of heart from Beetle will be reduced in half. I think it was 1600 before. And then if you waited until this point, it would only be five or 800 rupees. So you could do that. And ironically enough, the reward for 70 gravitude crackles from Batro is two gold rupees, which I do not need, so I'm not gonna go grab them. Instead, I'm just gonna wait till I have the last two for the final, the final 80 in total. And that's it. That's it. That's all we could do now until we progress. And in our next episode, oh, this is a fun one. The Song of the Hero. We got a lot of things to do here, homie. Yes, we do. Well, guys, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.